Okay, and here's uh, part three. Uh, we're going to talk about Randy, the natural couture, versus James, lights out Tony. Uh, the fight kind of went the way I expected it to. It was kind of laughable, actually. I mean, couture went for a shot like five feet away from Tony. More or less what looked like grabbed, he grabbed Tony's ankle and pretty much just kind of fell over. <laughs> um, mounted went to mount, eventually finished with an arm triangle. Tony didn't throw a punch. Um, honestly, the, yeah, the fight just kind of went how I wanted it, how I thought it'd go. Um, as far as, like, where to go, uh, I think Randy Couture is one fight away from a title shot. Honestly, just because he's in the Expendables. He has this huge fight with James Stoney. I mean, he, he there's, just a, there's just some buzz around him, you know, because... You know, he beat James Tony. He's Andy Expendables. You know, that there's some spotlight on him, I, I feel. And, you know, it's Randy Couture. You know, everyone loves Randy. He's Captain America. He's very beloved in the UFC and was, you know, instrumental in making it the UFC what it is today, especially with, like, his fights with, like, T.O. and Chuck Liddell. But, uh, how did you see the fight? I mean, this is a really interesting fight. MF was boxing. Uh, it, again, we when we choosing Randy Couture to fight with Tony, and people are afraid because uh, Couture is getting old. He's forty seven. You know, we are afraid he cannot take a punch. But again, we, some people forget he is very, you know, very smart. Uh, he fights smart. And then one of our buddy Tony was mentioned that he come up with a short trunk. Very smart. I mean, he knows he cannot fight with a punch. He can fight. Can fight fire with fire. You're gonna go take down, and exactly what he did. He make sure you know Tony has no way out and choking out. It just it definitely tell people when you be in one dimension. No, you are not gonna survive in MMA. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, Randy. You know, he, he's been in the game for a long time. A true veteran of the sport. You know, he, he knows how to get things done. He, he he's really smart. He's a really smart fighter. He he doesn't play to the other guy's strengths. He, he generally plays to his own strengths. Especially at his age. I mean, that's, uh, that's what he can do to win. And he knows that, too. Mm -hmm. So, finally, uh, we'll get to the main event. BJ, the Prodigy Pen, loses to Frankie Dancer Edgar by unanimous decision. Um, I picked BJ to win the fight, but, you know, I wasn't sad that Frankie Edgar won it at all. Dave was really sad. He's a big fan of BJ Penn. Uh, man, Edgar's just a great... Uh, I really like him. Big fan. He really proves that the little guy can beat the big guy. Um, you know, uh, his standout was better than BJ's. You know, he'd, he'd out-wrestle him. He, he would... Even in jiu-jitsu, he kind of nullified what BJ had. Even in the fourth round, BJ looked like he was going to take the back. Frank Edgar, just a dog, man. That guy just, he does not stop moving. I mean, there's just things about Frank Edgar that you can't teach in, in the gym, you know. That type of heart, that type of resilience, you know, that type of urgency. He, he's, that, you know, he's all, you know, there, there's never any downtime with him. He, he doesn't stall. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't just wait there. He doesn't get comfortable, you know. He's always moving. There's always a sense of urgency with him. Uh, really impressed with his performance. Uh, he'd probably fight Gray Maynard next. Frankie has made a lot of improvements, uh, more so than Gray Maynard. I already talked about Maynard and how much I'm not a big fan. Stylistically, Maynard could be Frankie, but I think this time around, Frankie would actually be uh, Gray Maynard. But, you know, how do you see BJ Penn's performance in this? Seeing that you're a fan of his. How did he feel? What do you think he could have worked on? Strengths, weaknesses. What do you think, Dave? I mean, again, BJ. I mean, dude, you are my model. You are my role. I mean, he's, he's someone I really, you know, look up to. Uh, I think BJ this time he come out focused. He come out trained. He has his six pack. He is ready to roll. I mean, unfortunately, I don't want to say this, but you're right. Frankie has everything there. I mean. Big guy versus small guy. Small guy wins. You got the endurance I don't have. You go in and out. You got the speed, which is very important. And the play a good, you know, a very majority X factor in here. And that endurance that you are not giving out. I mean, 
I punch you, I'm tired. I mean, you know, BJ doing a lot of punch. I mean, boom, right there. Frankie still hold up. I mean, he never let go. Not even one, you know, section. He go five round. Every round he come on, he's like, I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. It's very annoying. I don't know what to do. I mean, you try to punch, you try to get away, try to take that. You know, I gotta say, uh, Frankie got BJ number this time. Yeah, one thing about uh, Frankie Aguilar that really impressed me was just his diversity. Um, leg kicks, knees, takedowns, punches, different types of punches, different combinations. I mean, it was just all there. I mean, seriously. Uh, in the clinch, he, he, he did this, like, really vicious elbow. Great ground and pound. I mean, I mean, it was all there. Working from his back to get up. I mean, it, it, everything was there. I mean, I, I've never seen a guy look so well-rounded. And ex and show that well roundedness in MMA. I mean, he showed like everything: clinch against a cage, st you know, kickboxing, you know, takedowns, you, you know, wrestling right there. Uh, BJJ from his back, BJJ from the front, ground and pound. It, it, it's all there. I, I I was really impressed with uh, Frank Edgar. Uh, as far as BJ Bell goes, man, I I feel that he hasn't evolved. Um, he's great, but the problem is, when you're great, you peak at a certain level, and everyone else is getting better and better, and eventually someone's just gonna beat that level. This could just be a case where Frank Edgar is the one guy that can beat BJ Penn, but BJ Penn can beat everyone else. It's kind of like Machida; he seems like he can beat everyone except for Shogun. You know what I mean? Um, but. The fact of the matter is, Penn, one-dimensional. I don't know why he didn't go for more kicks. Great to see him do some takedowns, but, you know, um, th there's just a lack of diversity in his mm -hmm. game. And I think you study it enough. With Frankie, it's like, well, he does have the edge in movement. BJ Penn's very flat-footed. I mean, he's a very flat-footed fighter. Um, but the thing is, you know, uh, Frankie just looked really good. Uh, I don't know how else to say it. BJ kind of looked the same as he did in the first encounter. Uh, Frankie just pretty much much looked a lot more polished than he was in his first encounter. It didn't it didn't seem like BJ made any great strides in the fight or any anything like that. It just seemed kind of like like um, you know Frankie really trained hard, whereas BJ didn't seem to train very hard at all um and well no no he looked like he trained but he didn't look like he really improved in any one area you know and he didn't adjust his game plan during the fight it, it, it just seems like a lot like the first fight except frankie kind of got got in more and got his game going on more than bj ever did i mean he 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 just got BJ just kind of got dominated to be honest um is there anything else you'd like to finish with uh this this fight mm, that's pretty much it you got all the points out there I mean there's nothing I can say about it hopefully BJ would took this loss and then you know go find his uh himself again and come back strong yeah um the thing is with uh Frank Yeager like I said he'll probably most likely he'll fight uh Grey Maynard next even though I don't want to see the fight, it makes sense. It's a rematch. Um, stylistically, Maynard may have the tools to beat Edgar. I mean, in the first fight, Maynard pretty much out-wrestled Frankie, but this time, Frankie looks like a lot different fighter. Uh, BJ Penn, though, is where he needs to go. He should definitely fight some more top 10 guys. He's beat a good amount of people in the division, but... You know, he needs to really uh, rethink of what he wants to do. He, he's not old by any stretch. He's like 31. I think Kenny Florence like 34. He's not old. Um, you know, there's always a question mentally with BJ Penn. And also just, it's always like, which BJ will show up? You know, it, it always seems like there's a problem with motivation with him. Um, and I don't know if he knows that. One thing that was also talked about uh, with my other friends and, and my brother was that he seems to surround himself with yes men. Um, 
And honestly, I don't think that's really good for him. Uh, the best, you know, he, he really needs people that will tell him, like, hey, you're doing this wrong. You need to work on this. Not some yes man. Not You know, Joe Rogan said that his corner was just giving him pep talks. I mean, that VJ needs some sort of change if he wants to improve and stay relevant. You know, he's still relevant in the division, but if he wants to make it back to the top, he's definitely going to have to... Uh, reassess uh, everything from his training to his style of fighting and whatnot. So uh, that's it with uh, today's UFC 118 post fight analysis. Uh, if you have any questions with MMA, please go to the C and D channel at gmail.com. And uh, finally, we'd like to thank our sponsor, gopcs123.com. Yeah, thank you guys very much.